Okay. Um, just to ensure that everyone in, is in the right breakout room, uh, this is breakout room number one. Uh, we're hosting Aruna, Gringo, D Network, and finally Dream Action. One more time Aruna, Gringo, D Network, and Dream Action. If you um, uh, uh, would like to uh, switch rooms, uh, I think the option may be available uh, within your screen, but otherwise here uh, within a, a minute or two, we'll uh, start the presentation first by having the Aruna team ready. Bautari, just uh, be ready. Uh, on cue, you'll uh, start. Sudah boleh dimulai. Okay. So um, go ahead. Uh, so the format again, for everyone's uh, awareness, uh, we'll have uh, up to a five minute presentation by each of the companies. And then uh, we'll uh, have a, a Q and A session uh, to follow after each uh, presentation. So i um, very excited to uh, welcome you back, uh, Aruna Bautari. The uh, time and place is yours, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, hello, uh, everyone. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Utari from Aruna. Uh, I will share my screen first. Uh, I was born and raised in coastal village, actually, in Indonesia, and that's uh, one of the reasons why we create Aruna. So Aruna, Indonesia, if we're talking about Indonesia, we have a huge uh, potential of a marine country. But the people that live in the coastal area living under poverty, and there is so many problems if we're talking about the coastal area. Uh, one of the problem is the the page uh, the price difference between the fishermen until the buyers, uh, and uh, because of the inefficient supply chain for data management and also bad quality control. And our problem is uh, come for the real. Uh, problem that we have in Indonesia, there is so many middlemen in terms of these conditions. And uh, in, the, in Aruna, we are connecting the small scale fishermen direct to the global market through creative technology. And we enforce the fair trade that will make their uh, work measurable and also accountable with our application. And uh, although Indonesia is the second largest fish producer in the world, the number of fishermen has been decreased more than 50% for the past 10 years. And Indonesia is ranked 68 in the Global Food Security Index. Uh, the loss of fishermen will definitely affect of the national food security or even the global. And if we're talking about the market size, uh, there is 3 billion people that live mostly uh, to turn the sea as their primary source uh, of animal protein. Meanwhile, millions of people around the world are living uh, from the fishery sectors, include the fishermen. So what is our business and product actually? Uh, in Aruna, we are the technology company, but we also working with the fishermen and fishermen community. We enforcing human presence in shifting their behavior by developing Aruna site. So Aruna site is uh, the place where the fishermen and also the Aruna team meet. And we, uh, it's the fish hub uh, where we do selling with the fishermen. Uh, we, we'll, we implement our technology also in there using our IoT and also traceability technology to manage the quality of our seafood community. In the fishermen uh, community, we have the fishermen, uh, the local heroes to operate the application and also the women workers. Uh, currently, uh, in Indonesia, we have 20,000 fishermen that already registered in our application in 32 locations from Sumatra to Papua, with most of our market is in the US, Canada, China, and also some of the country like Japan, Korea, mm -hmm. and also Singapore and Malaysia. Most our, of our product is like the lobsters, uh, blue swimming crab, crab uh, shrimp, uh, and also some of the fish. This is some of our technology currently uh, for some of the countries. We also uh, already implemented our own brand. Uh, for example, for the blue swimming crab, uh, we already uh, sell the pasteurized crab meat. And we also implement our IoT to trace uh, who is the fisherman that catch the fish and where is the location. Currently, our competition, we are compete with the local middlemen and other seafood company. 
uh, one thing that make us different because we can trace uh, sustainable resources and strong local insight with global exposure. Uh, for the team, we have four pillars like the commercial team, the technology and strategy, fisherman community, and also creative team. Currently, we also recognize at the Forbes 30 under 30 uh, in Asia at 2020 and 30 under 30 Indonesia in 2021. Uh, last year, even uh, during the pandemic, we already grow uh, 80, uh, 86 uh, revenue growth compared to, to 2019, and we also uh, have a uh, impact for the fishermen, uh, they, they income increase until three times uh, more higher. Currently, we also uh, have collaboration with some of the NGOs and also the, the government. Uh, we also have a collaboration with the local bank and also some of the ministry to ensure the, uh, the program that we can create for the local fishermen. And uh, in the future, we want to maximize our advantage in Indonesia. Uh, if China, they are manufacturing country and they have Alibaba, we want Indonesia as a marine country have Aruna. And we are also looking for partners. Currently, we are looking for the fundraising, uh, start from 10 million uh, US dollar. We are also looking for partners to uh, increase our working capital, uh, start from 6 million US dollar. And we also open for collabor collaboration with others company especially for uh, food and services company in, in the US. I think uh, that's all from us. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Bhutari from Aruna. Um, to the audience, uh, you are, um, uh, you can either ask the question directly or post them uh, within the chat box. Uh, one of us will be reading the, the, the questions and then ask them on your behalf. Uh, does anyone have any questions for uh, Ibu Utari and uh, Ibu Sara uh, uh, from uh, Aruna? Do we have any questions on the chat box uh, for Aruna? Okay, uh, there was a question uh, uh, in advance uh, for uh, Ibu Tari and uh, Aruna. Um, can you uh, uh, describe uh, your experience uh, in having uh, been uh, uh, is, uh, uh, selected by Alibaba, uh, which is uh, uh, an equivalent of Amazon here in the US, and uh, share with us what your successes have been uh, in using that platform to um, promote your products in uh, China, please. Yeah, uh, thank you for your question. Uh, yeah, uh, I, uh, we, Aruna, uh, also recognized from Alibaba as the most social impact startup. Uh, we also invited to Alibaba uh, at 2019. Uh, we recognize as the most social impact startup because we can combine between the technology and also the impact for the people that live in the coastal uh, village. And uh, that's also the reason why we, we can connect our market direct to the China, because we already have the collaboration with the Alibaba. Audience for uh, the team at Aruna. Okay. Well, I'll ask the questions here that uh, had come in previously. Uh, you had mentioned that you were requesting uh, up to 10 million US dollars in uh, uh, funding uh, to improve your working capital. Uh, what sort of uh, uh, usage uh, do you foresee uh, using that 10 million dollars for? Can you maybe briefly explain so uh, the audience can understand better? Yep because currently our biggest market is the US and also Canada. We are uh, looking for more work, working capital to uh, fulfill the demand from our buyers because the, the, the buyers have the huge demand and the fishermen have the huge uh, production. Uh, that's why we need working capital to connect the production from the fishermen direct to the market, especially in US. That's why we are also looking for partners in, in, in the country. 
And uh, for some of the, the funding that we get, we want to develop or advance technology to increase productivity from our fishermen. We have one question no? from the, thank you very much, Bu Tari. Uh, Bu Ita, would you like to ask the question from the chat box? Yeah, uh, maybe if uh, Alex Sukinto is here, he, 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 he can, uh, he can uh, uh, convey his uh, question directly, Pak Bimo. Is Alex here? Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you for the time. So my question would be around your Internet of Things capabilities. You 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 kind of uh, breeze through it, but I just want to understand what exactly it is and how it becomes your uh, your key value proposition compared to your competitors, for example. Yep. Uh, thank you so much for your question. Uh, for the U.S. market, especially, it's really uh, they really concerned about the traceability and sustainability seafood because we're talking about the food security, and that's one of the reason why Aruna is different from other seafood companies because with our application, we can now uh, understand who the fishermen that catch the fish and where is the fishing location to make sure that our seafood is really sustainable and also traceable. We even can track who is the fisherman, what is the time, and what is their fishing toast. And we can make sure that every seafood that we produce is really uh, concerned about the sustainability. And that's how the IoT uh, can make uh, an impact for our uh, product and also our business. Uh, got it. And how exactly do you do it, though? So I, I think like that's what I'm trying to understand. Like, uh, do you, like do you do you provide fishermen with tractors of some sort? Sorry, I'm just a yeah. bit confused sure. with the. Uh, sure. So basically, we have uh, some of the things. Uh, one is the uh, tractor, like the GPS uh, that uh, that implemented in our fisherman uh, boat, uh, and that's how we can trace where is the location and the fishing location of our fishermen. And some of our IoT is uh, connect to the uh, scale, digital scale for our fishermen. And some of the IoT is connect to the fishing gear and fishing tools of our fishermen. Alex, uh, could we have the pleasure of knowing uh, uh, who you're with, what company? Perhaps, uh, uh, can you introduce? Uh, sure. Uh, yeah, I'm a second year MBA student from NYU Stern. Okay. From Indonesia. Wonderful. Uh, Thank you from the great state of New York then. Thank you very much. Um, was that the end of your question, Alex? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. That's a perfect uh, answer. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for attending. Um, there was one other question that came up uh, also for uh, the team Aruna. Um, you had mentioned twice that um, you have already market penetration in the US. Uh, can you tell us uh, like uh, uh, how are you going through, working through with uh, distributors already in place in the U.S.? Yeah, currently we're working with the local distributor in U.S. Uh, for the U.S., we're working with the local uh, importers company uh, in there. So for now, uh, for the U.S., it's still not uh, using our uh, direct own, our own brand. But for Canada, it's already with our uh, own brand. Okay, so if I want to buy uh, a crab and lobster from uh, Aruna, I'd have to go to where in Canada? Vancouver? Uh, yeah, in Vancouver. Okay. You can find our product in the local supermarket in there. Okay, that's uh, wonderful. Um, are we doing on time? Uh, yeah, uh, we should have one more minute. So, um, okay, uh, is there another question from the box? I think there is one of the questions uh, that asking what is our uh, backbone for cloud database. Currently, we are using Google. Okay. Mm. And that question was uh, uh, Ms. Uh, Bramianti, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, to everyone. Okay. Okay. So, are we ready? Uh, thank you very much. Um, the Aruna thank you. team and uh, everyone who had asked the question. Um, I think, uh, okay, for follow-up, which is the most important thing here, uh, if you would like more information about uh, Aruna, either you can contact uh, 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 Aruna team directly on the chat box or better, 
uh, that you would contact the uh, team at the uh, economic function at the Consulate General of the Republic of Indonesia here in Houston or contact IACC uh, uh, team itself. We'll be sure to focus um, all your inquiries to one and the appropriate uh, contact team. So thank you once more. Um, I'm so very proud uh, to uh, refer to our um, uh, Indonesia as Tana Airku. I think you're doing a great job, uh, Aruna team, in uh, uh, optimizing and, and, and doing uh, what you do for the betterment um, of the ecosystem and the marine ecosystem in Indonesia. Terima kasih sekali. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward for the future collaboration. Terima kasih. So um, next, uh, we have the pleasure. I have the pleasure of uh, introducing Gringo. Uh, who do we have from Gringo? Yes, uh, it's gonna be me again. <laughs> Hi, Pabi. Uh, uh, Mas uh, Febri. Uh, uh, yes. And um, our presentation is yours, sir. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you. So let me start by sharing my screen. Okay. Uh, so I hope. It's pretty clear for all of you. Um, hi, uh, everybody. Um, good morning and good evening, I guess. Uh, my name is Febriadi, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Gringo. Wait, if I so, situate yes. presentation first, Mas, uh, because it's not coming out yet clear on our end. Ah, why, don't okay. you, why don't you situate your presentation first? Okay, so... Okay. Is it okay? Uh, it's still moving around um, it, and it's too big. Right, this is better. Okay, okay. great. So yeah, um, again, uh, good good evening and good morning, I guess. Um, so um, my name is Fabri Adi. CEO and co-founder of Gringo, a sustainable development issues. And since 2015, we focus on how to improve waste management system. So if you're wondering uh, in the United States uh, what Gringo stands for, it's it's not the Gringo you know. It's basically a, a play word between green and go. So don't, you know, just trying to clear it on that. Uh, so the problem of waste in country like Indonesia starts with lack of infrastructure and certain behavior of the people towards waste. With 15% of global uh, plastic oceans come from Indonesia, it does not look good for, for us. But again, you know, a problem means opportunity. Uh, looking at the existing system, we can categorize waste management into four phases, with each phase linked to each other. Gringo focus on both consumption and disposal phase because we thought this is the crucial part if you want to change the system for the better. As we know, people are still practicing open dumping and very few embrace waste separation at home. So, so if you're one of the lucky people during this disposal phase, you could see your leftover end up in landfill most of the time. If not, then probably your leftover end up somewhere else available. On the other hand, recycling industry needed a lot of materials for their production, which comes from waste collection system. Um, sorry, let, please let me know if my internet is unstable. Okay. So uh, for that, we develop an an AI based model application to help you learn and unconsciously change your behavior toward waste in a fun and rewarding way. In short this app will require users to do certain activities related to sustainability in order for users to get incentivized. This data then will be recorded through our system to train our machine learning model for better waste segregation. So currently, SWI have been launched in beta phase and have reached more than 1,000 users across the country with more than 70% accuracy to help users identify different type of waste of recyclables around them. This model will be combined with our waste smart, uh, smart waste platform system where we use web dashboard and waste collector app to help manage, monitor, and improve the existing system. We create a new standard operation to ensure that your leftover going to the post-disposal phase or worst case 
to the landfill and not somewhere available. So at the moment, we are operating in several locations in Bali, as well as Goa in South Sulawesi, and doubling the waste collection rate and increasing waste recycling rate up to 33%. And currently we have different revenue streams, but at the moment, most of our revenue comes from grants and sponsorship for programs on waste issues. We provide a small financial related support for the waste collectors, and we also conduct buying and selling recyclables from them. We are currently looking for strategic partners, corporate partners, also funders to expand our locations and develop better solutions to generate reliable supply chain that will activate new economy for the people. Currently, we are seeking uh, 3 million in funding to widening uh, the scope of implementation area and climate investment to develop waste facilities, initiate model for carbon offset on the waste diversion, as well as building community to help us expand globally. And Gringo have been around since 2015, and currently we have 23 people in the team with different expertise. Uh, me, myself, have more than 10 years of experience on technology and innovative solutions, working with different projects and startups. We are the only one in Southeast Asia that receives 100 applicants, applicants from all over the world. We also did collaboration projects with Coca-Cola Indonesia, and also did uh, we, we are doing a grant project for from uh, USAID as well and happy to connect uh, with you for further discussion uh, thank you and good night and good morning I guess so yeah thank you uh, very much uh, uh, Pa Febri that you. was um, really an inspiring uh, concept that you've presented first of all uh, do we have any, uh, I cannot see the chat box. Uh, do we have any questions for the team at Gringo? Okay, well, the questions are, are uh, coming up uh, for the Gringo team. Um, how, um, uh, how much of your revenue or uh, work is coming in uh, from the global market, uh, for example, uh, uh, countries that are, uh, you know, uh, uh, requesting Indonesia to recycle um, their their recyclable waste. Uh, are you doing? Um, are you picking up uh, work from uh, global from other locations outside of Indonesia? So, for the recycling sectors, uh, I guess we are still collecting from inside of Indonesia, but. Yeah, uh, for our revenue purpose and also like the fund that we receive uh, are mostly from outside of Indonesia. I guess it, it I would say more than fifty percent. More than fifty percent are from outside. And um, if 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 we're um, you know if we're looking at the landscape for waste management, um, Indonesia, you know, we can we can see we can say that Indonesia also one of the one of the source of the problem. But again, if you compare to most of the countries in the world, we are actually doing um, uh, a recycling much, much larger. I mean, we have a big recycling industry as well that basically catering uh, a lot of countries. I mean, many countries in, in Europe, you know, Australia, they, they basically ship their, their recyclables to us and we are, we are the one who process it. And yeah, I mean, like like I said, I mean, um, big big problems comes with big opportunities. And I think definitely the opportunity is there. Again, uh, any uh, more questions for uh, uh, Febri in the chat box? Anyone? So one other question that has come uh, ahead of time uh, for you is: uh, yes. uh, you uh, had indicated there that you had. Um, uh, collaboration with the United States, uh, USAID, basically. Uh, yes. Can you uh, uh, the uh, scope and project uh, uh, work for that? Uh, what sort of interest does the United States government have in your uh, product and service? 
So basically, we are we were selected for MWRP Municipal Waste Recycling uh, Program. Uh, we we got selected in 2019. We started the project 2009, late 2019. So basically, we are trying to implement the uh, innovative solution to for for a pilot project in three villages in Denpasar, Bali. So the whole idea is we pick a, a village, several villages there, who has who have some issues with their waste management system. We come down and we take uh, that baseline data. Uh, we cre- uh, we look at the ecosystem there and we basically try to improve what they're doing there using the, the solution that we uh, that we have in Gringo. So we develop the tools. We also use, uh, use digitalization for the village. Um, yeah, those kind of things. And it, you were asking how much. Um, I'm not sure if I can disclose that how much but yeah i mean uh it's we we are dealing with uh, usa as well for that well thank you uh for uh the share you had requested up to um i think 10 uh was it three million three million uh yes. percent of which uh you had uh, mentioned uh, uh to be allocated for technology of infrastructure roughly about uh, 750,000 us dollars can, can you tell us the technology infrastructure you talk, you you want to develop so basically one of the one of the biggest uh, investment for a tech company is always the personnel and also the, the the infrastructure like the infrastructure includes the server and everything uh, at the moment uh, we are running a cloud uh, based system and I think we're going still going to use a cloud-based system. But once we are expanding, we will need to have our own backup as well as for a server. Um, we definitely will be needing uh, more more personnel for for the technical piece as well. And I guess uh, if if you're looking at the chunk uh, of of the funding, it will go mostly to the people because I mean the talent is a bit hard to find not not hard but it's very competitive with especially uh with with bigger companies i see uh thank you we have one question here from the chat box i'll let uh uh miss yes. Ria question directly um w- would you like to ask your question directly to pa febri go ahead ria hello selamat pagi uh selamat malam pagi. Dan, uh, Ria, buta, buta, ya. okay, hold on. So uh, the reason I ask, uh, saya taruh uh, pertanyaan saya di situ ya untuk Pak Febri, karena um, recently saya uh, di share sama my colleague, there's a there's a small uh, Kenyan company that they transform plastic waste into durable building materials that my yes. colleague would like to start it in Angola. And then I saw this. I said, "Wow, this is so 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 interesting." So, saya mau mau tahu kalau di Gringo sendiri itu, Bapak uh, Pak Febri proses uh, waste nya jadi apa? So uh, we we are so so. Let me let me uh, probably uh, pr- uh, make it clear. Uh, we we don't really uh, process the waste. Because like the, the recycling industry already exists in Indonesia, a lot of in recycling industries and also a lot of uh, processing uh, material processing facilities already exist. But they are exist in an organic way, so most of them are still uh, um, informal, and most of them don't actually have any any system at all. So what we do is basically we are a tech company that comes in to them, connecting the dots and making sure that they have the supply and connect them with the demand as well from the bigger companies. So if you're asking uh, what what are the, the, the product, the end product would be, uh, I guess would be uh, for, for our partners, most of them are going into bottles again, packaging. Um, some of them, the lower quality, uh, we have a partner that, that process them into pallets. Uh, as well as uh, chair, uh, you know, low quality chair and stuff like that. 
Um, but yeah, uh, uh, for sure, like in Indonesia also exists that, that people who process those plastic into bricks and also uh, into uh, cement, no, not cement, uh, but asphalt. So yeah, I mean, there are, those are, there's all kind of things that, that people process, making sure that uh, we have the system and whatever that is produced later on can be traced back into the, the, the collection. So, so you would know, for example, if, if, you, if you pick up a bottle, bottle like this, uh, you can see, uh, you cannot see the bottle, but basically. So if, you, if you're looking at the bottle and you can scan uh, the, the bottle, it will, it, it will tell you like, where is, does, it, does it come from? How, how many recyclables uh, that, it, that does the, the bottle uh, consist of? So you can tell, you know, those kind of things that we are doing. We're just making sure that, that people do uh, recycling in the proper way. So uh, we actually have one more question uh, from Audrey uh, yes. in the chat box. I'm going to ask that the question, Audrey, be uh, uh, saved for the end because I'd like to give the opportunity for D Network and Dream Action to present. So let's uh, hear it first from D Network, and then uh, as uh, we have uh, hopefully more time, we'll ask the question from Audrey. So team from D Network, uh, time and place is yours, please. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much. Um, so happy to be here. Uh, so I'm gonna be presenting on behalf of D Network. We are Disability Jobs Network. Um, let me share my screen. Yes. So I would like to start my introduction, I guess, not this presentation, by um, stating the fact that over 20 million people in Indonesia with disabilities. And the network aspires to economically empower them by building inclusive workforce across the nation. Some of us might question why are most people, uh, most people with disabilities in Indonesia are unemployed? And really, it's most likely not their fault. There are so many problems regarding disability and um, employment. Some of them uh, are this. Job seekers with disabilities, they experience hardship in finding jobs, and that's most likely because of the low level of education that they have, the skill gap between what they have and what the industry needs, the lack of information about work world, because when they're in special needs school, they're not taught about professional career, and the inaccessible of job portals out there. And then there's also stigma and discrimination. Whereas for the companies, they are not used to inclusive employment yet. Uh, Ibuhani, pardon my interruption, but your presentation is too small to be seen. Can you enlarge it a little bit? Thank you. Okay, thanks. Um, so, as I said, companies are not used to inclusive employment. Uh, there are lack of knowledge about disability issues. Uh, there are a lot of assumptions about people with disability and the workspaces are not accessible and basically they worry so much because of their uh, misunderstanding about disability issues. And then there's also this problem when the pandemic came, uh, this is a big problem for the disability community. The job seekers and workers with disabilities are very vulnerable in the labor market. Those who are already working they're the first to got laid off um, when the pandemic happened because mostly they work as the blue collar workers. And so we have to also ensure that people with disabilities have the skills that match their current, current career opportunities. So we also hold uh, more specific educational programs such as computer and digital literacy and English and other 21st century skills uh, also under commercial and we come up with a holistic solution. We have an online platform. Uh, this is a fully accessible online platform, meaning anyone can use it, whether you're using a screen reader on your phone or 
your laptop. We understand very well the um, digital attitude of people with disability, and we use that to build our online platform. And then we also do consultation for people with people uh, at the company. We provide professional services for them to create an inclusive workspaces and to find best talent. And we also do educational programs where we uh, teach learning design program. Uh, we equip people with disability with skills and knowledge, and hopefully those will result in sustainable employment. Right now, our um, platform has been used by more than 2,000 users, uh, people with disabilities in Indonesia, and more than 500 companies uh, in Indonesia. Here are some of the companies that have been working with us and use our uh, platform. As you can see, the industry is various. Uh, that just shows that any kind of business, any kind of company, they can be boosted if they want to. So we have various business models. Um, we receive grants um, such as from Inspiration Foundation, uh, Australian Ad, and we also uh, receive um, grants from Wiseley uh, Young Southeast Asian Leaders Initiative by the um, United States government. We also receive company CSR. And then we have platform monetization where uh, companies can subscribe and also put up a tutorial. And we have consulting services where companies uh, use our services to recruit and uh, hold their diversity and inclusion training. And then we also have a business unit where we sell goods, uh, which are the products that are created collaboratively with artists and makers. Here are our team. I know it's a small team. Uh, there's me, and then there's Arina, who's also uh, present here. And there's Kadek, our project officer, who is blind. And Kadek is the one who manages all the messages, all the emails coming in. So if you contact us, you will be talking to Kadek first. And I'll, I'm sure that you can learn so much from him. And we have a lot of volunteers, of course. So what we look for is, of course, growth, so we can make more impact. While small might be beautiful, uh, size matters when it comes to having a uh, substantive impact on society, surpassing and complex problems. So we aim to scale up by raising more funds that will help us to uh, First, have greater capacity to conduct experiment, access innovation, and replicate best practices across multiple locations. Because right now we are in Bali. Our platform can be used anywhere from across Indonesia or anywhere. It, it can be uh, replicated anywhere. But yes, we, we need help to, to do that because we are only three of us right now. And we also uh, need to build a more effective system with best management and bigger social things agenda to grow in scale and scope. And of course, we need collaboration uh, to make more impact. We are looking for innovative technology to improve the life of people with disabilities, especially in workspaces. We're open to talk about CSR projects or um, socially uh, responsible investment or any other idea you can talk to us. So hopefully this will be the beginning of uh, our further discussion or collaboration. Please stay in touch. Um, that's it from me. Thank you, Bob. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Ibu Hani from uh, D Network. Uh, I am I I'm really uh, uh, proud of what you do, uh, uh, especially to ensure parity. Uh, within um, all the workforce that are quite competent and available to have the same privileges as those, uh, uh, you know, uh, others in the within the workforce. So again, um, as uh, with the as usual here, uh, I'll prioritize first the questions that may be coming up from the uh, chat box uh, for Ibu Hani uh, from D Network. Okay, um, so no questions uh, yet. I'll just go ahead and ask a, um, uh, a pre uh, a question that had uh, come up before. Um, what is the, um, 
a percentage of um, people with disabilities uh, uh, that are applying for the, the same type of jobs uh, uh, normally afforded to those that are not disabled. Can you uh, describe a little bit more about the uh, data? Yes. So this is also the same, but uh, since inclusive employment is very new in Indonesia, uh, the, the government just released um, the law regarding inclusive employment in 2016, but before that, it was not even encouraged. Uh, so there is no clear data uh, whether, you know, how many people applying for the same job. And also, even many jobs out there are actually inclusive. It's open for any kind of background, any kind of, um, any person actually. But since it is not mentioned that the job is inclusive, that is kind of uh, off-putting for people with disability because they are very much, they're so used to being excluded from uh, equal opportunity. So within this, um, platform. We also wish to have a clearer data. Uh, we work with uh, the Ministry of Manpower and Ministry of uh, Social Affairs to also work on, on collecting that data and just build the actual number of uh, the disability landscape in Indonesia. Does the uh, government of Indonesia mandate uh, a certain uh, or require a certain percentage of companies to have uh, uh, to provide uh, the same level of access uh, uh, for people with disabilities, similar to the American Disabilities Act uh, mm -hmm. in the US. Can you uh, yeah. explain a little bit more? Yes. So just like uh, American Disability Act, Indonesian government released uh, the disability employment law in Second in 2016, and it says that uh, all private companies should hire uh, at least one percent of their employees uh, as for people with disabilities. But the thing is, there is no in enforcement for that law yet. So we help the government to, uh, you know, socialize that that law. But also, we don't want to put our messages surrounded into that law uh, because we don't want companies to just do it because it's the law. But we clearly uh, mentioned it to the companies that it is, there's a law behind it. But of course, the, um, the act of it, the act of being inclusive should come from the company itself, should come from uh, all the staff, all the management. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, you so much. Any, uh, any more questions from the chat box? I'm, I'm visually challenged here because I have to read the small print in the uh, box. Okay, so we don't have any questions. Um, I'll, uh, I think this would be a good pivot because uh, the next company actually I see very much appropriately aligned with what the network can offer, which is consultation and training uh, towards job applicants. Uh, so without uh, delay, I'd like to introduce you to Victor uh, Osman. Uh, from Dream uh, Action, sir, uh, the uh, time and place uh, is yours. Sorry. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Pabimo. Also, good day, everyone. Hi, my name is Victor Osman. I'm the founder and CEO of Dream Action, the company behind Dream Talent. Thank you so much for this opportunity to share with you about Dream Talent. At first, I'd like to share with you why we start Dream Talent. It's because of the discrimination sex, gender, race, religion, background, age, and marital status. And the other one is 80% resumes rejected and unread. So with the name of Compassion, we would like to give the solution. Solution is a platform to provide the candidate fit and performance quickly, easily, without bias. And here it goes. It comes Dream Talent as a predictive assessment and recruitment solution. Dream Talent has been evolving since the day one, we do the research and development, hardly research and development to provide an online psychometric testing platform to discover candidate job fit and culture fit. Potential performance with gamified assessment. So it's so much fun, bias free and for diversity and inclusivity. That's the very important things for us. We would like to disrupt the market. This is a 
pipeline that you usually use in the market from sourcing, administrative, assessment, interview, until hire. And we would like to make it easier. We would like to disrupt, to make it seamlessly integrated between sourcing and assessment. We combine the carrier portal, ATS, and psychometric assessment. Even we call it assessment tracking system. In the traditional day, it's very expensive to do psychological tests, paying with the vendor. Only some of the company, most of the company only spend on tests after filtering and high bias risk. That's why with DreamTelling, we would like to provide psychology tests in the first step using multi-measure tests, equal opportunity for candidates. This is our science. As you can see, we would like to make it more deeper, deeper than the ocean. That's the key point why we start dream talent we would like to assess starting from personality thinking style potential risk factor drive even culture nowadays we measure all relevant aspects of candidate psychology as a multi-measure test why it's to predict actual work performance because multi-measure test we can see is the highest predictive validity as you can see it's also developed in line with guidelines with international task commission and american psychological association this is our assessment tracking system. It's not unlike any job portal, which only have a list, but we would like to give the candidate ranking system by fit score with the job requirement and company culture. We quantify best employees with the drip profile. We identify common traits among your top performers. And of course, we would like to simplify the pipeline, significantly reduce hiring time and cost by automating process. This is our assessment. If some of you are wondering, this is our psychometric assessment, only takes five minutes test. And full assessments takes only 90 minutes. And you only need a smartphone or any kind of gadget and a connection Wi-Fi. It's gamified, lightweight, it's very engaging experience, encouraging high completion rate and genuine answers. Also complete profiling, we measure personality, intelligence, and culture fit in over 100 parameters. This is our report. We make it very nice, make informed decision with specialized report for every assessment and recruitment needs, starting from level one for job and culture fit, for hiring candidates based on fit score, level two talent mapping, for talent development and career coaching, and job forecasting for level three. This is how it looks like. This is our competitive advantage besides bias-free, seamless experience. It's Science Foundation. It's 60 cumulative years of research and development, validity and reliability and shares. Cost efficient for sure, we save up to 98% of assessment and recruitment costs. Decision ready, continuous, R&D. You can see the difference using the conventional and dream talent. This is proven methodology. If some of you are familiar with DISC or MBTI, it's been seen back in 2019, 2000, sorry, 2019 and 2020, it's not valid and it's not reliable, especially in the hiring industry. This is our competitor. Maybe some of you are already familiar with some of the uh, platform, but Dream Talent, we provide integrated ATS and also in-depth profile analysis. This is our client case study. As they say, it's 90% plus, even sometimes they say 96% assessment accuracy. 60,000 more candidate process and 1,000 plus plus talents higher. We reduce from seven days to only one day. Increase candidate capacity from 1,000 into 5,000 per month. So it's more productive, more committed, and more success in basic training. Compared with the poor fit uh, candidates that get the poor fit, they will fail the probation. And of course, vice versa, the good fit score get what I explained before. Searching demands in April 2020, our sign up increased more than 11,000%, and company sign up increased more than 800% because there is a new trend and urgency during this COVID-19 that we're facing together. 81 million job loss in Asia and organizations shift to virtual recruiting, more than 89%. So strongly hiring among the tech sector and other even the pandemic. We would like to expect an increase in the economy recovery with economy recovery and also vaccines right now. This is the market size, huge market size. The recruitment software, it's more than 3 billion US dollar market size. In Asia Pacific, it's highest growing. And also in the other market, though we do understand we have challenge. First, in COVID-19, people stop hiring, resistant to tech and change among Indonesian HR especially. 
That's why we would like to get into the US market, which is more mature and demand for standalone assessment. We, that's why we give the solution. We would like to work closely with vocational school, direct source talent to the companies, seminar, workshops, scholarship for young, inspiring HR professional. And we put pure standalone assessment and custom task selection based on your needs. This is our price. We can talk more about this later. And this is our milestone as a national delegates for South by Southwest. Thank you so much for all your support. We also collaborate with the Ministry of Manpower in organizing two joint online talent fairs. And we are the first one for the talent fair in Indonesia. Uh, we've been asked to cover during this COVID and pandemic. And this is some of our achievement that we've been through. Why we do all of this? Because we would like to make no bias free means equal opportunity, equal opportunities for uh, disabilities, military, ex-convict, and so on. That's, that's what our goal, because we would like to make a better employability. We would like to make equipped talent from SMK, the vocational school, with employability skills. And we aim to empower promising students to develop their potential, because we can help to find their strength and find career that fits and get equal opportunities. And so many methods, three methods with sponsor premium on Dream Talent, training, scholarship, and also partnership. That's why we're really looking forward to work together with you. I'm Victor Osman. I've been 12 years uh, portfolio in IT and people management uh, in Jakarta, Singapore, and Sydney, Australia, together with my co-founder, which is a psychologist, has been 10 years portfolio in psychology and organizational development. This is our founding team. Yes, we do have in-house team because we believe when we grow together with our team, then that's going to be a beneficial for all of us. We do love growing people because we love people and information technology. That's why we bring to you Dream Talent. Thank you for this opportunity. We're really looking forward for any cooperation partner in US or maybe resellers or software integrator. Looking forward for that. I'm Victor Osman. Thank you very much and try our tasks. So much fun. Thank you so much. Let's be amazing. Thank you, Babimo, and ladies and gentlemen. Let's do that indeed, uh, to be amazing together. Um, let me thank you, Pat Victor, for um, the you. presentation. Can we check the, uh, check the chat box first? OK. Um, Okay, so I'll ask the uh, prepared question uh, we have from uh, before from Dream, 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 Dream Action. Um, what, um, uh, you know, you, you've already established a, a system in place um, to, uh, to ensure that uh, companies and people interested have the best talent. Uh, what have been the challenges that you have faced so far in your business during the past 2020 COVID uh, pandemic uh, uh, year? Can you share some of that and how your product has helped to actually uh, overcome the challenge? Yep. The challenge during COVID-19, especially with our clients is, of course, enterprises stop hiring. That's why the solution we give, we work closely with vocational school, uh, ladies and gentlemen. We also directly source talent to the companies as well. That's the first challenge. Companies stop hiring. Even some of them, they do downsizing. That's the first one. The second one, of course, the challenge is resistant to tech and to change, especially in Indonesian HR. That's why we have to educate them first. We have a dream talent, virtual talent fair with the Ministry on, of Manpower, and we also give scholarship for young aspiring HR professional because we would like to aim younger advisor for decision maker, just like what is stated. And the third one during this company uh, pandemic, more and more HR, this is the good things, but also a challenge. They also demand for a standalone system. That's why we give the solution by, uh, we're gonna providing in the next pipeline for the pure standalone state uh, assessment. And we give a custom task selection based on their needs. Because right now, uh, more people know us. And also thank you for all your support, ladies and gentlemen, more people know us and they would like, they start to think 
how we can maximize this stream talent, this kind of technology is kind of new for them. We're really looking forward to, to riding the wave during this pandemic. Meanwhile, we also would like to help others as well, Babimo. Thank you. Thank you, pa, Victor. So I, um, I, um, I, I'm not sure if we have uh, Mr. Rarson from Oklahoma State here. Um, you mentioned earlier, uh, pa, Victor, that uh, your consumers here have been vocational schools and I assume also universities. Uh, what opportunities do you see uh, uh, as far as collaboration with uh, universities and or vocational schools that are here in the uh, U.S.? First of all, if uh, Andrew, if you're on this uh, uh, meeting room, I'll, I'll uh, also let you uh, give you the opportunity to ask the question uh, while Victor is, uh, you know, talking about, you know, is answering the question that came before you. Go ahead, uh, Victor. Yeah, thank you, Babimo. Also, Mr. Andrew. Uh, what we can do with the university, for sure, we can collaborate with them, especially from the psychology psychologist background. The psychologist background, for sure. That's the first one. The second one, we can help them to discover themselves because we get dream talent based on big five personality and so much more. We can help them to uncover, discover their career path discover their strength, discover their potential, and so on. And we can also work with university, how to invite more people to come to the university, because we can assess people from the high school graduates, which high, high school graduates supposed to learn in the university, which, which major they should take. We can also provide that kind of things as well. Okay. And on top of that, of course, career is going to be the key, uh, the main key. We would like to provide career for the university student, starting from internship, also for the, in the professional manners. I'm, I'm excited, uh, very much excited. Thank you, so, Bobby. I'm going to, as promised, uh, go back to the question that was uh, uh, left pending for uh, Gringo. Um, in the interest of time, because we need to go back to the plenary session, uh, Mas Febri, you uh, saw the question from Ms. Audra Sunanda, right? Uh, can you go yes. ahead the question? Yes, so the question was, um, um, the sorting system, um, from my understanding, the sorting system that works in Gringo right now requires users to scan photos each ways to identify waste system types. And yeah, I mean, basically, uh, again, uh, as I mentioned, we are, we are currently working with a recycling company to uh, implement the AI model for them uh, to help with the sorting uh, uh, activity. And the whole idea with, with the app is to generate, to create a basic education for general population and also to help them to, to introduce to them as well uh, the recycling the recycling type of, of materials and yes I mean it, it's, it definitely can be done uh, we are we are trying to collaborate as well with bigger recycling uh, facilities so we can implement the AI system okay thank I you hope that answers it. Yes. Uh, that, I'll take that to be the last question so I, I guess uh, before we go back to the plenary session uh, again, if you uh, in the audience or uh, yourself would like to uh, contact each of the companies here that have featured their services and products, you can contact them directly uh, via the information they have shared in the chat box. Or, um, again, you can succeed by contacting uh, uh, them directly. But if you want to succeed longer and together, I think it is always better together and Slalu Baik Bersama, if you can contact the one-stop shop at the Consulate General of the Republic of Indonesia here in Houston, who has the network, the contacts, and the resources, and the partners, the community partners, like the Indonesian American Chamber of Commerce, to help you make the connections with uh, uh, not just the companies here, but Indonesia as a whole. So uh, with that, uh, I'd like to bring, um, uh, everyone back to the main plenary session uh, where we will close uh, the event. Uh, uh, before the, uh, go ahead with that. Yeah. Uh, thank you, uh, Bimo. Uh, 
I see here, Ibu Ria, you would like to have uh, the slide right book from uh, from team uh, from team Kita action. Distribute. Yeah. So um, we will we will uh, contact each of the uh, startup if they wish to share their presentation. Definitely, we will uh, send uh, the presentation to your emails and also their website so that uh, the participants could. Uh, could find more informa information from their website. Thank you, Pat. Okay, thanks. Uh, to as much as we uh, uh, can share, uh, definitely, I believe uh, uh, some, if not all, of the uh, slides uh, that were shared today will be shared with the participants. Just make sure you uh, uh, provide your full contact details uh, to the uh, Consulate General. And also, if you would like to also contact the Indonesian American Chamber of Commerce here in Texas. Thanks again. Uh, we'll adjourn uh, back to the plenary session uh, for more to come.